Style takes too long. I can't fit anything. I have nothing in this closet. Oh, I'll just stay home. I need to purge my closet. Oh, but not that dress. Yo, Taylor here. If you ever thought to say one of these phrases, then this show is for you. Join me at the Style Table, where we'll have candid and fun conversations about real women's style issues and wardrobe dilemmas. We will discuss solutions and ideas that will give you a big sigh of relief. You'll learn ways to save money, make money, and enrich the lives of others with the clothes in your closet. We're going to take the stress out of your style. Everybody, it's Yo Taylor back here at the Style Table. I am with the amazing Dr. Alisa White. She is the dynamic trailblazing founder and president and CEO of Fulfillment Empowerment Network and the vice president of Save the Girl Child Advocacy Africa. Dr. Alisa is a multi-award winning international best-selling author. She is a transformational leadership and master mindset coach and an international motivational speaker and trainer. What an honor to have this amazing, amazing woman on our show today. She's going to talk to us about some of the things that she's doing, how her triumphs and her style, of course. And at the end, we're going to find out how you can get involved in helping her help young people and young women be the very best that they can be. Dr. White, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Yolanda. I am so excited to finally sit on record with you because we've had the amazing pleasure of meeting earlier this year and scheduling out this September show. But connecting with you has been an absolute pleasure. I would say I I met a like-minded sister who it's it's just we're we're going to rock way for past this particular recorded session. So that's a blessing. Thank you so much for having me. Well, let's let's start with just what you're doing with young women, because that's my passion, helping women and particularly young women uh, avoid some of the traps that we as as older women have learned and uh, had to learn the hard way. You're you're helping them get on a um, straight narrow path to success faster. How do yes. you do that? So Yolanda, one of the major things, my actual moniker that I go by is the number one mindset disruptor, because I personally believe that everything begins with a thought. And I have a, a, a phase that I go through that is a process and, and you hear it. I say, how you think is what you speak, is what you do and it's what you become, meaning the results you are getting or you're not getting kind of lined up in that four steps. And so with young women and everything I do, I say it begins with your mindset. I am blessed to, as you read in my bio, I am the vice president of Save the Girl Child Advocacy Africa. And in that organization, what we do is literally save the girl child. Um, we started out in the African continent in Nigeria, and we have a team of valiant, thank God, men and women who are rescuing young girls from the hands of predators, sexual molestation, and even in uh, uh, being you know, abducted, literally rescuing them and getting them back to their families. But more so we're in the schools in Abuja, Nigeria, teaching the girl child about themselves, their body, and empowering them from the mindset. Also, with education, because a lot of these young women are suffering with the finances to even have a meal and maintain going to school on a weekly basis. So we have sponsorship. We put our own monies in 
to ensure that that's happening for young women from the ages of nine all the way up to even uh, university and college years in there, like 21, 22. We've had fashion models, designers, and global leaders from all over the world that are ambassadors and representatives working with us. So that's been an amazing thing specifically for young girls. In my own work here back in the United States with my coaching and most a lot of my messages are directed to my sisters, these ambitious women. We have been the glue, Yolanda, that's helped society over all the, the um, econ economic failures and wars. We are the glue. Everyone's always looking back to mom, you got it? Mom, did you? Wife, did you? Sis, sis, big sis, you got it? You know, we're always the one keeping things going. Mm -hmm. And it's not just, I am one woman, when I speak of women's empowerment, I just post it out publicly on my social media. There's no women's empowerment without the male empowerment. So we, my, I, I like the holistic approach, but as I share with my brothers, is that as a woman, I can't talk to your issues the right. way you can. So I'm going to stay here and focus in with my sisters. And the goal is, is for us to get all that trauma and pain and heartache that we've experienced through life, wherever I meet you at, whether you're 15, 20, 40, 60, 90, let's clean up, girlfriends. Let's let's get, the, get it out and fill up with a new mindset, a healed heart, and understanding the unique blueprint of our souls and just go out and rock. And with you, Yolanda, then we get to, you said earlier, put on the cloak that the, the outfit, the hair, the lipstick, the clothes, now that we're wearing is mm -hmm. now a representation of the beautification that we've done the work inside of ourselves. And so that's what I get to be a part of uh, my journey is cleansing, cleaning. I really, uh, it's, it's detected under the corporate work I do with consulting and um, career guidance across the globe, also work, global workforce strategists, career strategists. I do that both here in the USA and corporate work, but it's still at the core, if you, you know, the core of my work is seeing women heal and transform and living and walking in their purpose and creating their abundant life, whatever that is for them. So that's what I get to do. <laughs> That is amazing and how inspiring. And you're right. And when you feel good and your mindset is 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 good and clean, when clear and um and you have that confidence on the inside, that is the cloak, what I call the cloak of happiness. That's the word. And yes. with that, with that, no I, I love designers, but a designer outfit cannot give you that kind of power that the cloak of happiness and internal confidence and self-assurance uh, can bring to that outfit. Absolutely. And, and that's that what- that outfit. <laughs> yes, yes. That's a, if you feel good on the inside and you put and you put your fabulous clothes on something that you love wearing to wear, that's a one-two punch when you enter the room. That shuts the room down. Yeah, and that's what it's about. That's yes. what it's about, and, and that's where our platforms collide so beautifully, because you know the things and the right things to put on, on the body when the work is done, and it just it, it's a, it's an enhancement to that punch. Yes, it's not a one punch, as you said. It's a one, one two, two uppercut. <laughs> That's right. That's and everything right. that you want now, whether it is you're trying to connect with a new relationship, a new career, or you level up and ask for sponsorship and partnership in business with that confidence in that glow on the outside coming from the inside, you're unstoppable woman. You're That's unstoppable. Right. That's what's responsible for what I would say the majority of my success is because of how I show up. And I show up in spaces I have no business being. They're speaking a different language. It's a room full of men, people I don't know, but I am confident and I'm pure in my intentions. I'm sure of my own purpose. And then they probably love the red lipstick. <laughs> well, that red lipstick looks fabulous with, with the, 
Thank you. I get oh to say because I've heard so many people say it. I'm starting to believe the hype myself. <laughs> I love the red lipstick. I love the red lip. That's fantastic. Especially with your glasses and the way it all looks so good. It's so powerful. Yeah. So we, you know, we we had several conversations and we talked about um, along with that confidence and building, you share a story of your triumph. You said that there was something that you had to overcome. And once you did that, you realized you could do anything. Absolutely. And that is why I'm going to share. That's why I, I believe everything begins with a mindset because I was born and raised in Guyana, South America. That is on the north side of the South American continent between Suriname and Venezuela and then Brazil at the south of, of that small little 83,000 square miles. And so uniquely um, at the age of 14, I had a, a head injury that caused me to lose mem my memory because I damaged tissue around my brain. And in my recovery journey, there had to be, because with that loss of memory, it was almost like I was a clean slate for a minute because mm. they had to work with me to retain my memory, hoping I would regain all of them up until that point. But I remember the doctors telling my, my my family, and by the time I was aware enough, that we don't know she would make a full recovery, but here are the limitations. Where I came in is where I knew, once I was aware a year into the journey, was that I hadn't been to school for almost a year. And the doctors are saying that you shouldn't because that's going to cause you trying to study and doing homework and, and learning could put more pressure and cause me to have a slower healing process, not knowing how the recover would look because they can they can do a lot of repairs with the brain, but tissues at, back then, no. I don't know what, what where, where the science is now, but back then the answer was no. So I had what, what I would say a sort of life sentence that even the doctor said, it's gonna, it's up to God. We're gonna let, she can do therapy and all that stuff because the injury was also attached to um, trauma. So that gave me a one-two punch for you going down. Up until that point had been a, an excellent student, very, um, very well known and in, in, in my performance nationally, um, academically. And so it was the doctor saying, uh, we don't know what's going to happen to her. So not, so let's let her go to school. For me, with the journey, knowing that I wanted to be something, I had a choice to accept that or find how like we did with COVID, didn't we just pivot like which was beautiful because i get to meet i got to meet so many people around the world virtually and now i travel to those places and and we do those things in person but we learn to pivot as humans and what i say in my work with mindset is the mindset we all got one it's the intentionality behind our mindset that gives us results. So when the doctor says she's not going to do that, even though I was coming to about 15, I'm sure about that time, I looked at my mom and I, I thought about, well, how can I still go to school? How can I still do some work? How can I still now become something? How can I? And I want you women and men that are listening on both our platforms to understand this big question. When you have a desire to do something, to achieve something, don't just look at what's around you and say, well, I can't, I wasn't, you know, that doesn't happen for people who came through what I came through. I, I went to prison for 20 years. Like, uh, I mean, I'm, I got a record. I got a felon. I can't do that. No, no, no. How can I, if you don't hear me say anything to all the things you dream and whatever's placed in front of you, how can I ask yourself? and the answers will come. That's the mindset shift I want you to get. So my question as a young girl and not understanding behind it, because she has young children, we are very, very resilient. I like to always put the image back in our head if you did learn how to write, or if you didn't, I know you've watched videos or clips of children learning to ride a bike and they fall and they scream some of them because they got hurt but you'll see them get back on that bicycle. Exactly. They exactly. never say, the younger we catch them, the more determined they are to ride that bike. Right. We saw a video that's viral of a child just in a, in a walker that's going, she thinks she's running a marathon and they're like, wait, wait, wait. 
So what happens to us as adults, the older we get, we lose that level of resilience because we're thinking too much or we're thinking yeah. without intentionality. And, and yeah, and when you're older, you have more of that fear because you fear kind of the risk have, factor. Right. And when you're younger, you're just like, you don't have that fear. You're just like going for it. And it's... Um, it is, it's, it is a mindset, but the thing that I find fascinating is that, that I love is the fact that you are talking to young women about their mindset because at 15, your mindset was, in spite of all this, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do this thing. I, this is what I st- set out to do, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, I'm going to figure this out, and I'm going to do this right. thing. And so you're giving inspiration and hope and encouragement. And literally, it, you're transforming the mind yes. of someone who might say, oh, you know what? Everybody around me is telling me I can't do it. I have all this negative energy around me. You're telling them, block all that out. Exactly. You. Exactly. You have the answer. You can do it. And that is the thing that why you want to catch young women. The youngest. Exactly. We can. <laughs> the exactly. youngest that we can. And I just had a, a meeting this weekend with two men, two global leaders that are so, I love them so much. They're, they're going to get the men. They started this program called Boys to Men. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I love the boys to men. So they had a good name already. <laughs> they like they're going to be doing the same thing specifically for young men. And and as you heard me share earlier, Yolanda, even with Save the Girl Child Advocacy after which is directly with young women, we have men in our, our directorate, the, the leader and the founder of Save the Girl Child. He is a male. Um, he's probably a little bit younger than I am. And the work he's got a other young men that work with him because when we're talking going out and rescuing a girl physically i can't do that right the physical rescuing and saving the girl i can't so i get to work with them on the mindset and we have other women from around the world all different colors and creed that help to pour into that and also the ministry of of human affairs in nigeria has supported us and backed us there's a woman that's the minister and she's with us but we need the whole to get to where we want to go. Like I could, I also am affiliated with another group in um, Ghana. He works with, he calls them the street jewels where he went out and rescue girls all 17, 18 and brought them into a home. His story with me though, was these girls, they didn't know how to lay in a bed. They didn't know how to lay in a bed, much less believe that they had any worth or value. And he said the thing he had to do was they had to work with them on how they saw themselves and their value to Mm -hmm. even get them to sleep in a bed. And if, and I was so excited to hear that because again, it was a mindset and you're, you're, you're not, you're responsible for your mindset, but the one you're carrying is filled up with a lot of limiting beliefs. That's the fear. Yeah. Those limiting beliefs, not necessarily Im- impeded by you, right? It's based on the trauma that you've experienced or the things you were neglected or, or d- that was not given to you as a child, even in utero, Yolanda, even when you are in the womb and, and maybe your mom d- wasn't sure she should be pregnant or wanted to be pregnant with you, or she she did, but then the father said, Oh no, that's not my baby. You were already rejected in utero. That spirit of, of rejection has already attached itself to you to where you feel less than and less worth. So maybe you come out and you got adopted by a great family, but you never could understand why you feel like something is missing. That mm-hmm. that spirit of rejection has been attached to you. And forgive me, I'm not speaking Christianity here. We're talking real life. Even oh, medical yeah. science talk about the energy. They use the word energy for me. It's a spirit, right? And I understand energy. That energy and that thought is within you already from the uterus. Could you imagine when you had your first failed relationship, when that boy broke up with you, when that girl dumped you, when that teacher yelled at you and told you, all you good for is talk and jokes. 
why aren't you even, you don't even get a C grade. You gotta learn, like your mouth's running, but you're not doing anything. Someone just spoke words, someone in authority spoke words into you that caused you to believe that you're something. So here you are with a mindset filled up with limiting beliefs. So you're getting so far, you've gotten a degree, you've gotten education, but you're still not seeing stride. Now it's time to take a grip of your mindset. See, I'm saying we all got one. It's where it came from, by incident and from environment. And, and a lot of people um, are already in their their mindset. And so they have to realize that maybe it's a switch. You know, you're doing everything else right. But, you know, you may have turned this switch on, this switch on. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm getting my degree. I'm, I'm doing all this. Why am I still pedaling in this in the this uh, wheel and I'm not off and I'm not rising as far as I feel like I should is because mm -hmm. there's still that one switch that you, yes. that that's the imposter syndrome that you yes. have really seen your true potential. And I can stand here, or, well, I'm sitting, sit here and tell you all right now <laughs> You're really um, stand and talk. Authentically, that that switch never turned on for me. I didn't think mm. where that switch was until I was in my 40s. Mm. And that's why catching young women and reminding them of their power and their intelligence and, and that they belong, they belong in that room. Yes. They are worthy to be in that room. They are worthy to be loved Yes. And and they're worthy of respect. Yes. That switch needs to be found when they're early in, in their early years. Because yes. otherwise you'll be you know, not that I'm the work is not gonna be so bad but it's a lot harder. Yeah, but nobody don't 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 wait to find that switch. We don't wanna wait. So they find that switch when they're they're my age. They need to find that switch earlier, earlier. so they can achieve great things and raise and cultivate another generation of young women who are already ahead of the game because they're going to exactly. raise their daughter to find that switch sooner. Sooner. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what you're and doing a lot of us are seeing we're mistaken when we think about empowering a lot. I feel like. We've only focused on what career does a woman have? Is she getting paid the same amount of money as the male? You know, yeah, we need those things to be resolved. Yes, we have to go after it. But we're only looking at the external things that concern women's empowerment. We have not focused enough on the internal things mm -hmm. empowering a woman. And that is, for me, I say, let's return to our feminine power, mm -hmm. the core of who we are. You use the word authenticity. It is at the core of my vision and mission. And for me, authenticity is not the woman who knows what she wants and knows how to say it and knows how to get it. That's that's bravery, that's, that's strength. I wanna know who do you see yourself at? Well, how do you think about yourself when you're sitting over the toilet bowl? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bit graphic. <laughs> what are you thinking about yourself? What are you thinking about? When you put your head, your back on the bed and you're on that pillow, how do you feel about yourself at the end of the day? Did you have to cut another woman down to feel good about yourself on social media? Did you have to fight with a man in the, in the boardroom and say things and use a masculine strength? Because we both have male and female energies. Yeah. But we dominate as a woman. Our place is most powerful when we bring our feminine energy. So what are you thinking about yourself at the end of the day? Is there a sense of peace? I feel like a lot of people say, oh, I want to be happy. I want to be rich. I want to be this. But honey, the soul is always seeking peace. Exactly. You wanna... I've never seen or heard of anyone who had the opportunity at their last few days if the doctor give them notice and know they're going to die, sit there and say, oh my God, I didn't get my Porsche. Oh, I didn't right, win that right. chip. Exactly. Now that's they're looking for those memories of when they spent meaningful time in nature with another human being, with family, when they impacted someone, 
when they spoke somewhere and people said, yes, I resonate with who you are and what you've accomplished. Those are the things that matter. So don't wait till you're old like me <laughs> to figure that out. <laughs> peace, peace is everything. And like what you were saying in regards to when you lay your head on that pillow and that feminine energy, feminine energy, that's when you're going into, now listen, you, you have to go in and slay that dragon when you're in the, in the corporate world as a woman. You have to go in there. But listen, you can do yes. that in style. You can dress like a woman. You can feel, you can dress and feel feminine and look feminine. Yes. And, but, and wield that power while yes. you're being your true to your femininity. Yes. You don't have to go in there and look like them in order or sound to, like them. to or sound like them to get, get your uh get your message across. And better yet, when you have that right right mindset, if they're not gonna if they're gonna cut you off at the knees, then you start your own. Woo! You yes. them. Because yes. you can, and you can do it looking fabulous in your yes. red bottoms, in your yes. fabulous suit, with your cloak of happiness, with your cloak of peace, and Come walk on. in there and, and handle your business because you yes. can. And that is what feminine energy, feminine power, and that's yes. what a what a transformational leadership master mindset coach can help you with and yes, help you get that it. done right here with that's Dr. Right. Ray. And then here comes my sister. She'll <laughs> take over from there and make sure all that you are dressed to look the part because it's a combo. Remember, she started off saying it's a one, two punch to knock them out. <laughs> that's right. That's right. When you feel good on the inside and you look good on the outside, you can go in and slay the day. And that's what oh, it's all about. Oh. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> Dr. White, please tell us, number one, how we get in contact with you. You're also doing work that, that could use volunteers. How can we help you? How can we get your book? We need to know how we can stay connected with you. Absolutely. So the hub for all things me and we're revamping my website. It is my first and last name, A-L-I-S-A-W-H-Y-T-E.com. And all my social media is linked there. But if you're looking for me on LinkedIn, it's Dr. Elisa White. If you're looking for me on Instagram, which I guess now they've got us using that more now than anything, but I, I kind of keep the forces balanced. It's Dr. Elisa White, Elisa White. You will find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. They've got me everywhere. But my, So you can stay in touch with me there and, and shoot me an email, email as well if that's what you're into. Connect with me, please. Here's the deal. What I get to do is create and bring people together to, number one, first, live their purpose. And then take that and make meaningful impact in the world. I, I've been, that was, that, that was always my vision, but I didn't think it would happen as quickly. One of the things we are working on in my particular organization, Full Feminine Empowerment Network, we're putting together a global youth ambassadorship program. This will be for boys and girls. We're still going back and forth on the age. We're in our very early kind of stages. Well, actually, we're launching in October, and I am ready to ask for volunteers because these ambassadors, these young people will be from all over the globe. We will operate mostly virtual with the intent for 2023 to bring us together in one place. We're going to need volunteers for mentorship. We're going to need trainers. We're going to need sponsorship. So if you're listening to us, you heard it here legitimately first outside of the core team at Full Feminine Empowerment that it's happening. It's the Empowered Youth Forum, Forum uh, Ambassadorship Program. What our intention is with the youth is to do exactly what Yolanda and I spoke at, but we're working with both male and female, is to help them switch their mindset, empower them as community leaders and advocate for their peers first. Then also empower them in the role as whether they want to be entrepreneurs or they're 
career. We're going to help them with their career planning, and organizing with their mindset, how to strategically get started now at even age 12 with what you want to do, who you want to be. The main thing is teaching them how to dress, how to think. Listen, we do have to teach our young people how to think. The reason we said here, everyone has a mindset, but it's the intention behind it, right? We're going to do that career and business and also expose them to the world outside of their community. But then they take all that and develop. They're not just going to come and, oh, we give them all this wonderful training. No, 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 no. There's going to be an accountability process and a hand over hand as much needed process. That's where we need your help to ensure that they plan their advocacy platform, whether it be climate change, whether it be um, uh, human trafficking or abuse, domestic, whatever floats their boat. We don't want to tell them what to do. Listen, young people, as I talk to them, even in, in at age eight, they're passionate about something. Oh, we know they might not be passionate about it because I wanted to be a, a medical doctor when I was 10, but that changed over time because I realized the surgery I want to do is on the mindset. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so they weren't going to be able to train me with with my um, MD with that. So, but but I was always as a young child out in my community, going to homes and visiting communities with less privilege, and bringing children out to Sunday school and working with the adults in my church to get clothes and food to get, distribute to the poor. So I, I wrote a big long post on my social media platform that I have been doing this since I was yay high. I'm just getting to do it now on a global platform, but guess what? It's because my mother and my community let me. So I want to advocate for us to begin initiating that in our youths around the world, because I get to touch so many different parts of the world. It's gonna be an open application, but we're only gonna be able to choose so many at a time and it will be annual for the ambassadorship and then they will become aluminized and we'll continue to work and see where they go. This is going to be awesome. And it's going to be a great opportunity uh, for people, especially for, frankly, for your college, college applications. I mean, it, it's, it's a win-win to be of service to others. Absolutely. Now Absolutely. you guys know- Just a little time virtually. And then if you want to go- into the world with me, we can arrange that too, because we're going to Africa next year. We're going to go back to India and Dubai so far already in the calendar. And so that's all part of the gamut. So get in touch with me at alisawhite.com. My website has all my social media and my email. You can email me and I'll get back to you. Usually, you know, I'm still releasing work to my assistant, but I'm very personable. You you'll get me, I'll, I'll, I'll come around and you'll, I'll talk to you and give you more. And that information, that launch is happening um, in the middle of October. I think we have October 8th on our calendar for the launch for that program. So I'm looking forward to it. And you guys know where you can find me, Yo Taylor at the style table.com at the style table, LLC on Facebook at the style table, Instagram. You can see Dr. Elisa White on our YouTube channel at the Style Table LLC. And please, please know that I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Yes. And I have a new new show coming up called My Style Mondays Ooh at 7 p.m. And please join uh, Style Closets and Diva Dens group page where you can join in and be called to the stage to talk about your business and your style every Monday, starting September 26th, that first Monday. So hope to see you soon. Thanks for joining in. Have a great day. Bye. Have a great day. Bye everyone. Thank you.